Thank you for coming out tonight. My name is Lauren Lee. I'm the head of middle school here at Cathedral College in Wangaratta. It's really lovely to be able to see you all here in person. We have um, done this from behind a screen the last few years, so thank you for coming tonight. I'd like to start by acknowledging the country on which we meet tonight. And this acknowledgement is one that we use mainly with our junior school, but sometimes with uh, our assemblies as well. Here is the land, here is the sky, here are my friends and here am I. We thank the Pangarang people for the land on which we learn and play. Hands together, our hearts are bound. We are proud to be on Pangarang ground. As I said, the last couple of years this has been behind the screen and we've recorded these events. So thank you very much for giving up your time tonight to come and be part of our Year 8 2023 Information Night. For many of you, uh, this might be one of the first times that you've been into the college in some time. And as I said, we really appreciate that we can be back together um, to talk through what will be the final stage of your child's middle school journey. As they start Year 8, it is a very different time. Um, and one that we look forward to sharing with the children and we thank them for being here tonight. My role as head of middle school is to oversee the year six, seven and eight students in their academic journey and also the pastoral care and wellbeing of the students working with my team in the middle school of year level coordinators and homeroom teachers. As a bit of a plan for this evening, I'm going to explain the focus and purpose of our middle school community. Mrs Julie Finlay, the Director of Studies, will follow and discuss subject choices and the academic pathway for your Year 8 students. Mrs Sue Sinnett, who's our Digital Learning Coordinator, will then give an overview of how we can, you can stay up to date with your child's progress, which will be helpful both now and next year, um, and she'll give us a little bit of an update on where our learning management system is currently at and hopefully help you to understand sector a little bit more. We then finally have Mrs Michelle Lloyd, who's our Year 8 coordinator, who will conclude by providing an overview of our pastoral care system for our Year 8 students. It's really pleasing to see many of our current Year 7 students here tonight, so thank you guys for coming in. Um, probably with sore arms after your injections today. You're all very brave. Um, it's an exciting time as you commence your final year in the middle school. For some of you, you will have done the whole journey through year six and be progressing now to year eight. And for the other half of you, um, you joined us at the start of the year um, and have been just new to our middle school. But it's quite interesting as I stand here tonight and look out, I can't tell which category you fit into because we seem to have just mixed in really well, made new friendships, new connections, um, and really worked well together so far as a group, which is really pleasing. I've really enjoyed the opportunity to work with you and I'm really looking forward to continuing that um, next year in the middle school role. Okay, moving on to the purpose of our middle school. So we often get asked this question of what is it about middle school? Why do we have it? What's the purpose of middle school? And for me, I think that the biggest thing here is that we're acknowledging in our P to 12 school that there is a really significant stage of development for our young people um, at, between the years of year six and year eight um, that are sort of in the middle. They're sort of somewhere in between. Um, some of them are still, when they enter year six, looking for that um, or, or still working at a primary school level and trying to push towards the middle school level. Um, some of them are really pushing ahead and with our year eights, we'll see the same. Some of them are still establishing some of those routines that are really important as a year seven student and some of them are really looking forward to that next step into the senior school. As our young people work, move through the middle school, we hope that we are building and helping to create young people who are independent and responsible for their own learning. 
That's one of the biggest things we aim to achieve in Year 8. We still really value the strong connection that we have between parents and school, but we also like to think of this as an opportunity for us to work more closely with the young people and ask them to take more responsibility for their learning and development. So in the first instance, often we would be talking with the student if there was a challenge that came up and we would be helping them to navigate the situation. Um, and of course, if required, still bringing parents into that conversation. We also hope that throughout the year, we will support our students to be confident, resilient and independent young people who are not afraid to follow their individual pathways. And over the year, we hope to continue to develop the strengths of each of our young people and to help foster their interests and um, talk about things like careers where they might be heading towards the future uh, that is a little un unknown to them, unsure, um, but very open um, and with really good pathways to follow. We also encourage our young people to try different learning styles and to um, take advice on different strategies that they might want to use or try to give themselves the best possible opportunity for success. Most importantly, we encourage all of our students to recognise that they are the centre of this learning journey and for them to be successful, they need to take ownership of that. Over the last few weeks, I've done a lot of um, enrolment interviews and as part of that, there's tours that go on, there are families that come into our school wanting to become part of our community. Um, or explore what that might mean to be part of our community here at Cathedral. And one of the things that I love about being part of the middle school, but also about the school in general, is that uh, I see our community as very inclusive, very friendly, um, and that's always evident as you walk through the schoolyard. Often, if it's a recess or lunchtime, you've got to dodge the down ball games, but in amongst that, there's the conversations that come up. The students are always willing to have a conversation, to check in, to tell us what's going on in their lives, and we're really lucky to be developing that strong culture of positive relationships and respectful relationships within our community. So looking at the opportunities and exploration, I'm sure that you recognise that you've already had a lot of opportunities within the middle school. The students here tonight will be able to tell you all the different things that they have been able to sign up for or um, take part in. Um, and in year eight, that won't be any different. Uh, I think in the last couple of years, we have stalled a little bit and been unable to do some of those things that we really enjoy offering, but um, it's certainly back into the full swing of things this year um, and has been a really busy term in particular. In particular, we believe that all of our individuals have the capacity to be effective leaders and in Year 8, that's one of the things that we hope that we can provide uh, our Year 8 students with a chance to hold different leadership positions within our middle school community. In preparation for that, we will start to talk about um, an application process in particular for our middle school house captains uh, in the coming weeks. And we hope to expand the portfolio of those house captains and allow them to work with their year level coordinator next year uh, to build the capacity of themselves as leaders, but also to encourage others within our middle school to be really good leaders and strong role models. Early next term, for those students that are here tonight, I'll be calling for expressions of interest for those um, house captain responsibilities. And I encourage you to really consider that opportunity and consider submitting an application and undertaking that interview process. It's really about having a go, putting yourself out there. Sometimes that is a little bit challenging, but um, it's a really good process to be involved in. And whether or not you end up with that house captain badge, we hope that you will be great leaders within our middle school. I'm really looking forward to continuing to work with this group of young people and to seeing what they're capable of as they finish their final year in the middle school, but also as they head off into the senior school. And um, I hope that 
uh, one of the things that you think about as you start to move into that year eight is how you would like to be remembered and what sort of change you might be able to make or what sort of an effective leader you might be able to be within the middle school. Mrs Julie Finlay, I'd like to invite you forward now, our Director of Studies, to discuss subject, subject choices and the academic pathway for our students next year. Thank you, Lauren. Um, I'd like to echo, it is so nice to see you face to face rather than record this um, onto a screen and hope that it goes out there and you're listening so that you're making the correct choices with your electives. Um, it's also so much easier to actually explain why we're doing what we're doing and how you should make your elective choices. First of all, uh, Lauren mentioned the idea of what sort of leader or what sort of change you would like to be. I'd like to add to that, what sort of learner would you like to be? What sort of learning would you like to do? And think about how year eight might help shape what the learner is for year nine and beyond and where you would like to take that. And I, I say this because in some ways, year eight is not that different from year seven. In year seven, you've actually started at the school and you've settled in to core subjects. Those core subjects, in actual fact, won't change until year 10. So you'll still have your religious and values education. You'll still have English, mathematics, geography, history, science, and health and physical education. And the idea behind that is that you are sequentially building up skills and knowledge throughout the years giving you not only a wide range of skills and information that you can use, but also giving you such a broad range of experiences and understanding that whatever subject or whatever you choose to do beyond that, you can draw upon um, those experiences and what you actually learn. So it is a sequential program. Um, the structure might not be that different, but how you approach it can be so different. What do you want to get better at? What would you like to know more about? How could you improve in those particular areas? And your teachers will talk to you about that, the way you're getting feedback. And Ms. Sinnott, or Sue Sinnott's going to talk about um, the digital learning system that we've introduced, will help you become independent and drive your own journey. You put into it, you get out of it what you put into it and we will help you along the way with how you learn in those areas. Then there is the elective program. Now that is actually changing a little bit next year. So in your booklet you will see that there's a subject selection form which is colour coded. You will see in your booklet that you have the colour code system. Okay, so what's the bit that's the same? In Year 7, you have selected, whether you realise it or not, a subject that comes from the technology block, a subject that comes from the performing arts block, a subject that comes from the visual arts block, and a subject that comes from the physical activity block. Now, that is so that you have a broad range of experiences and in year eight you will build upon those. And the idea is that then after those two years you have the foundation skills and you can make some informed decisions about which, this, which of those subjects are your strengths that you could actually harness when you're studying in the future or which are the ones that you really struggle at and maybe by year nine you decide when you don't have to do any compulsory electives, that's not for me. So to ensure that you've got a little bit of choice that you can build on those strengths, we're going to ask you to pick one out of each of those blocks. So one out of the red, one out of the green and one out of the blue throughout the whole year. So, for instance, if I decided that I want to do Ag and Hort, I'll put a one 
in the first column and I might decide drama is my second and I might decide outdoor education is my third, physical wellbeing is four, but what I've done is tick off, that's my technology elective. And I'm going to rank in each of those three columns, one to six each of those electives. But throughout the year, I'm gonna make sure I've got one that is number one for arts, one for technology, one for performing arts, and one for physical activity. Okay, so at least one of those throughout the whole semester. Now, that is building on giving you a broad range still for those foundations, because if you did it in year seven and you thought it wasn't, it might not be the same in year eight, so you'd still need to find out and build that knowledge. By just having the four that you've picked in that broad range, you then have the opportunity, if you really like it, to pick a second thing that allows you to extend that further. So for instance, if I had picked visual communication, because I really quite like art and I want to make um, my portfolio of experience in art much broader, then I'm actually also going to pick um, in the second semester, I'm going to pick visual art because then I've got two types of art and I've got a broad range of experiences in those particular area. If you try and trick the system and think, I really like sport and I really like physical activity, so I'm just going to put physical wellbeing and outdoor ed for all six, we will pick that up. So please don't try. <laughs> and I know... Some people really like that, but sometimes it, we have to go through those challenging parts and sometimes we actually surprise ourselves with what we learn about ourselves. It is better to make an informed decision than it is not to have tried it at all. Now, I heard there was mutterings beforehand about LOAT because I know that is always the next thing that people by year eight are wondering about. LOAT, so at cathedral we have German and we have Indonesian and one or two of you actually um, study a distant subject because that's a second language in your home. In your eight you still need to study a language, a second language so it is still German or Indonesian but this time you'll notice it's not in the elective blocks and there's two reasons for that. Um, one, sometimes it actually is in the same block of, as a subject that you really want to do, and so it means you can't do that particular elective. Secondly, um, because by this stage, if you know that you're good at language and you actually want to study it for a lot, lot longer, you need to do more time, and so it was taking two blocks out of people's elective program. The third reason is because we actually are blocking them in single blocks, so it's a shorter, sharper burst, and the language acquisition is a lot better that way. So it won't be as part of the elective blocks. You just need to pick whether you are going to do Indonesian or German, and you circle that at the bottom. If you've been doing study skills in Year 7, then um, you will continue with that in year eight, so circle that instead. But they will all be blocked together and we will put you in a class because they're all happening at the same time. So it allows us to have a little bit of movement between those classes. It doesn't mean you start German and then go, actually, I've changed my mind, I'll switch to Indonesian, okay? Think carefully about which LOAT subject is best for you, pick that, and you will study that for the whole year. If by now you know that you actually are really good at this, and some people are very good at this, and I strongly advise you that if that is the case, continue LOAT for as long as you can. It opens doors. Sometimes it takes you through to um, year 11 and 12, and sometimes you may finish because you the options available to you, um, there's too many and you narrow it down, you might park that subject until you go off to university. Lots of universities give you the opportunity to pick it up again. 
And it's not just about the language, it's about understanding the culture. It's about understanding other people. It's about learning in a different way and having completely different skills. So if that is the case, you will do that loach that I've just talked about in the single periods, but you need to pick the advanced Indonesian or the advanced German as one of your electives. And you need to do that in both the first semester and the second semester. You can't just put it down for one. LOAT is a subject that you actually need sequential learning throughout the whole year right the way through. Okay? So, and you can do that in year eight, do the advanced and the mainstream, and then decide at the end of year eight, actually, that's okay, I, I've learnt enough, and all of you will decide whether you want to continue on in year nine and year 10 with that LOAT subject. I will be available at the end to answer any questions that you have, but the main idea about picking your electives is ranking those one to four in each column and making sure that you've got choices in the first semester and the second semester, and there are three. So you're filling in this column, this column and this column for first semester, this column, this column and this column in the second semester. So you get six electives by the end of year eight. As I've said, I really want you to think about you, not your friends. What are the things that you have really enjoyed? What are the things that you can excel at? And might possibly be something that you pursue in the future. Making choices about what you want to do will change so many times. But using your strengths is a really good way to help you find and navigate what you want to do and for you to actually achieve. Now, those strengths might not be the same as your friends. That's what makes life and society so beautiful, is those differences that we have between people. But it is really important to actually think about those. Read the information in the booklet so that you're picking, when you're picking food or you're picking art or you're picking those different sorts of technology, ones that suit you. Try something that you didn't get to do this year. That's the only way that you're going to make a decision about whether that's the right subject for you. All of that information is contained in the subject handbook. Um, and you can also ask your teachers because the chances are they're the people that have act will actually be teaching those subjects next year. Now, I talked at the start about what sort of learner you will be. And one of those things is about you being on an independent journey on what are your goals and how do you want to improve? How can you respond to feedback? Sue Sinnott, our digital learning coordinator, is now going to explain our learning platform sector and how you can use that to help you in that journey. Thanks, Julie. Before I go on, can I just get everybody to check that they've got the correct young person's name on the front of their curriculum guide? And if you haven't, that's okay. We can switch it over at, at the end as you head out the door. So. All of our young people will know that we um, started with Sector Learn as also a BYOD or Bring Your Own Device program at Cathedral College this year. Um, and this is what the students see when they log into Sector Learn. So I'm just going to go through how it's different for you, for you as parents and how it's different for our young people and how it's going to help their learning. So you can see the next one is what the Parents Portal Engage looks like and it's very similar. It has similar um, menu down the side and I'm just going to show you some of the features of that and I will flip between sector learn and sector engage but I'm sure you'll manage and follow along. So the first one is the dashboard um, that the students see in sector learn and you can see from that there are three columns. This student has chosen those three columns. The first one is the homework and the homework is set by the teacher and automatically appears in this place. The student can then move it to the task list, which is the middle one, or they can add their own tasks that they need to, um, to complete for school. The third one is their timetable. And as you can see, this student has nicely colour coded it. I love colour coding. The um, parents portal is very similar. 
So for this parent has two students, student A and student B, and you can see that student A has got some homework for English and maths, and their timetable is below, and student B's done all their homework or doesn't have any at the moment, and their timetable is below as well. Um, as parents, you can colour code their timetables as well if that's what you choose to do. The next thing I'm going to look at is um, some of the features within um, not just the outside and the organisation, but in each class. So this, for example, is um, the assessment portal. So when teachers release the date of an upcoming assessment, the students will see it here, and I've circled it in red. You can see up the top there, under upcoming assessments. When the marks are entered, um, by the teacher and released, the student will be able to see their marks and the assessment rubric, if there is one, and the teacher feedback as well. And if the teacher requires a student reflection, the student reflection will appear there and you can see that that's um, arrowed. Uh, this is similar in Engage, so I'm not going to show you that one because you end up seeing the same, very much the same screen. The next thing is in the courses. So this is where the day-to-day -day learning, the students can access what's going on. So you can see there again, I've got circled the homework and that would be where the teacher has entered the homework and that would appear on the dashboard. Uh, it's the same again as Engage. So if a student is away for illness or whatever other reasons, they can go onto sector and see what's going on in their class on that lesson. They can see the instruction from the teacher. They can see any videos or any other resources that has been put on there. Um, it might include handouts, it might be instructions, might be videos, homework, you can see there. Then there's the whole um, week's timetable. You can see, hopefully, on Monday afternoon and Wednesday morning, there's an extra little icon, and I realise it is interesting, uh, sorry, difficult to see at the moment. You can see it's just a little dash. That's the whole week view of that student's timetable and on those times, Monday afternoon, Wednesday morning, that student has an assessment. So as a parent, you'll be able to see what your student's week looks like and help them plan their revision and be ready to go for them and help them with their organisation. If you have any questions about uh, getting onto Sector Engage. The link for it is actually in the handbook that you've got in front of you, but very happy to answer any other questions at the end. I'd like to hand over now to Mrs Michelle Lloyd. Thank you, Sue. Um, my role in the Year 8 area is the Year 8 coordinator, and I work very closely with four homeroom teachers who are assigned to the four Year 8 homerooms, and together, along with Lauren, we try our best to um, make a big difference and help everyone enjoy their days at school. The, the well-being of the Year 8 students isn't just limited to, these, to the timetabled lessons. They are very important, but we see supporting our students through adolescence is something that all Year 8 staff prioritise and something that we um, value and take very seriously. We focus on building positive relationships with their peers, the school staff, and the larger school community. Um, this is achieved through an emphasis on resilience, communication, building their self-confidence, decision-making, and trying to help them start to make those connections between choices and consequences. Because at an adolescent level, sometimes um, that connection doesn't always happen instantly. So we look at more restorative work as opposed to a lot of punitive work. So we really try to encourage them to think through what's going on, have a chat with us, have a chat with someone else they trust and find an outcome. Students are encouraged to explore many tools that encourage positive growth, such as self-reflection, the mind-body connection, meaningful conversations and self-management. In a more formal capacity, um, students engage in structured wellbeing sessions during homeroom. So once a fortnight, roughly, there is a session set aside in the middle of the day for homeroom, as well as every morning, other than Wednesday morning, the students have about 10 minutes with their homeroom teachers together just to kind of set themselves up for the day. Um, we also have um, something called community time that happens once a fortnight on a Friday afternoon and that's looking at the whole middle school together and early on in the semester or in the year, sorry, we 
stay in homerooms a little bit and start to build those relationships within our homeroom and then we start to expand and we do cross-age work and students get to choose different things they're interested in and work with students from year six, seven, and eight. So it's the idea of building that whole school community in the middle school. The support structure for year eight students starts with a homeroom teacher and then their year level coordinator and Lauren. So we're sort of the core of that group. And then of course, if um, the need arises, we do have the chaplains and the school counselors and other um, people that can step in and help um, either within the school community or helping families connect with organizations outside of school that may be beneficial. Okay, the next one is um, very exciting, and that is the Torquay Camp. The Torquay Camp is a highlight for Year 8 students and staff. It is probably the easiest camp in the entire school to staff. There's a waiting list, I think. Everyone loves to go on the Torquay Camp in Term 4. Um, unlike Year 7, where the camp is at the beginning of the year because it's sort of that team building and letting everyone get to know each other, the Torquay camp in year eight is more wrapping up the experience of being in the middle school. Um, it's a combination of academics and fun. Um, the geography department set up some work that the students do while we're in Torquay looking at coastal landforms. And then um, we do a lot of fun things. We go surfing, sea kayaking, mountain biking, hiking. We go to the Surf Museum, which is always very interesting. And then the students get a bit of time going around the outlets and having lunch and getting to do a bit of shopping in Torquay. It's a really nice way to finish the year. Um, it's a good opportunity for us to spend some meaningful time with the students before, as I say, they cross the basketball court into the senior school. So um, it's always a very nice, nice time and it always has a really nice energy and vibe because we're just all together and it's really relaxing and fun. And some of the year nine teachers and coordinator comes along with us and it creates that bridge for the following year. So in year seven, it's like the introductory time. In year eight, it's kind of their farewell tour <laughs> before we send them off to the senior school. And it just gives them that relaxed time to um, make a few connections with the teachers that they'll have in the following year. So that is all I have. Thank you all very much for coming out. And um, we'll be around for a few minutes. If you have any particular questions for any of, any of the team, just come and introduce yourself and ask us whatever you need to know. So thank you very much.